actually play that? Or the spoons, or the cowbell, or so you actually other are noisemakers. Complimenting me on a musical You can, you can event? play the harmonica. Well, think of it. I may have found my instrument at that last. Is it's about time. Well, I tell you. you know, I, I, I say you stick with that, and I think we're probably going to do I may right. have to work on this harmonica thing. Maybe it's my gift. You yeah, might be. It might uh, put the kids through college or something. I don't know. Maybe I should, like, start a gig with, uh, you know, uh, the, the blues band. There you go. Maybe I'd become one of the blues brothers. There, yeah, well, yeah, you got to get you a little fedora, some sunglasses. Well, you know, I have sunglasses, but they're kind of more like athletic and, you know, well, like yeah. triathlete. I don't know, man. I don't know. So you don't, you don't think? I don't know. I don't I, think. I, I'm digging the harmonica. That's pretty cool. The harmonica may be the deal. Okay. Like All right. Hey, uh, today we're going to talk about the Kimpty. KMT, what the heck is KMT, Kinetic Molecular Oh, theory. that's what it is. Yes, wow. indeed. Well, we're starting a new unit on um, podcast 5.1. Of course, starts uh, chapter 5. five. Yeah, yeah. we're going to lump 5 and 6 together here, guys. So. Yeah, all right. So here is our um, agenda or the uh, things that we're going to learn about today. It looks like we're going to go all the way through these three objectives. So that's where we're at. And so I guess we should just uh, get at it. Giddy up, dive in. Giddy up, giddy ho. All right, so hey, um, Kinetic. Kinetic. What's that mean? Uh, well, um, it's called the kinetic molecular theory. If we kind of break it apart, we can figure out what this word means. Yeah, kinetic means things are moving. Uh, you know, kinetic means motion, right? Yeah. So kinetic means motion. You know, you ever heard of a guy named by the name of Michael Jordan? I do remember Michael Jordan. He's an old, old guy now. Yeah. And he used to play a game that he's pretty good at. I understand his name. It was, it was basketball. basketball. I think it was. Yeah. He was a pretty mm -hmm. good basketball player. You know, I used to hear that he was kinesthetically gifted. Yeah. What was he gifted in, Mr. Sam? He could move. He could make his body do things that no other person can. He was gifted in the art of motion. moving or motion. So, yeah. a molecular, kind of super easy word. What's that mean? I'm having to do with molecules. So, so the word molecular comes from molecules. So, mm. if you have the kinetic molecular theory, what do you think that really means? Looks like we're looking at molecules moving. So, let's call it the moving molecule theory. That's easy. All right. Or we could just say all molecules move. Move. That's it. Yep. They're moving. All. No, are you sure? All? Well, unless they're at absolute zero, which yeah. is zero Kelvin, they're moving. Even in a solid. Mr. Sams, we're sitting at a table right we now. We are. It is a table right here. We're sitting at this table. That's a desk. Yep. And it's a solid. It's made of wood. My yep. computer's on top of it. Yep. And the table is not moving. Mr. The table Sam's. is not moving, but the molecules molecules are. They're vibrating. They're vibrating? Yep. That almost sounds weird. It okay. is kind of weird, but they do. So so the, the molecules in the table are moving. Yep. You know, that's actually correct. You see, folks, what's going on at the molecular level. We think of a molecule as a sphere. These are actually more atoms. There's um, a, a line between them, and they're going back and forth. I wish I could show you. They're going ziggity-zaggity back and forth. It's a, think of it like a spring, and they're going back and forth. Okay, so solids move, we say, vibrationally. back and forth, kind of like a, a spring between mm -hmm. two balls. They're constantly in motion. In fact, a way to prove that solids move, everyone to envision a, um, a pan that you cook your eggs in. What's the difference between the pan in the cupboard, which is cold, and the pan that is frying the eggs? Um, the temperature is higher. So, well, yeah, you, you touch the one, you'll burn your hand. Right? Uh -huh. And you touch the other one, and it doesn't hurt. It feels no. cool to the touch. Yeah. Unless somebody whacks you on the head with it. That's true. That would hurt. But yeah. what, what do you think would, what's the difference between them molecularly? Well, if the temperature is higher, that means the molecules are moving faster. Yeah, so in, in the pan that's hot, the molecules are moving fast vibrationally, mm -hmm. and the cold pan, they're moving slow. Because it's still a solid pan. Yeah, it hasn't changed its state. Right, so they're just vibrating faster. And what's up with liquids? Um, they're just kind of cruising around. They're yeah. moving. They're still attracted to each other, but they roll around one another. Yeah, Yeah, they roll around each other. Okay, good. And then gases move. We actually have a sort of more scientific thing instead yes. of roll around each other. They move in. Uh, gases, they move in a constant random motion. What's random mean? Meaning it's unpredictable. It's all over the place. They're just every which way. So, folks, if I have a, um, if I have a, you might want a, a little sketch of this. If I have a container and it's filled with a gas, we'll uh, indicate them as a, as a circle. 
Um, they aren't always circles, they're molecular, but uh, they're moving in a particular direction, and another one could be moving in another direction, and another one could be moving in another. They're just random, and they hit the side. Sometimes they hit each other, mm -hmm. and they bounce. Mm -hmm. In fact, we have a fancy term is that they, they collide elastically. Elastic collision. Elastic? It's elastic. It's like a, your, your, paper, your, your, your waist belt. Okay. What? Your waist belt or your waist uh, thing, you know, elastic pants. You have pants. elastic on your pants? Well, I don't. It's like old man pants. Well, I'm, <laughs> not, well, I'm an old man, but you know what I'm saying. Okay, so that said, um, how fast do they move? Huh. Molecules are moving. And we're going to particularly talk about this. This chapter, of course, is about gases. Mm -hmm. So our focus will be on uh, gases, duh. And so we are going to uh, talk, ooh, a little typo here. Yep. We are going to talk about uh, how we know they move. Now, some of you have taken physics, and some of you are in physics, and some of you will take physics. You better all take physics. All Everybody take physics. takes physics. Physics is fun. Physics is fun with a pH. That's right. And so um, one thing you learn in physics is that there's an equation, and it's printed here, an equation for um, how fast they move. Actually, you can use how fast they move to determine their Kinetic energy. Kinetic energy. KE stands for kinetic energy. Mm -hmm. And so if I have this equation, KE equals one-half mv squared, if you know their energy, you can actually algebraically solve for their velocity. So how would I do that? Well, I would divide both sides by a 0.5 m, right? m stands for mass, by the way, in kilograms. So I can say that v squared equals... 2ke over m. Now, why did you put the 2 on the top, Mr. Sams? I have a point five. Uh, you're dividing by 0.5. That's the same thing as one? multiplying by 2. Yeah, so if that's 2ke over m, so how would I solve for v then? I would uh, take the square root of both sides. So if I take the square root of v squared, I get v, and that's equal to the square root of 2ke over m. Uh, we should also note that the, your m, your mass, needs to be in kilograms for this to work. Yeah, this must be in kilograms. And the reason for that, if you know what a joule is, when you take physics, you'll figure out what a joule exactly is, but it has to be in kilograms for that to work, and your velocity has to be in meters per second. That is correct. Okay, so now let's kind of uh, work this out. Let's take an oxygen molecule in this room. So if you look around, everybody, hopefully mm. you're alive, and if you're alive and you're watching this, you are breathing in <sighs> oxygen. Well, oxygen is the element O2. Yes. And O2, of course, has a mass, mm -hmm. a molar mass. Molar mass, yes. And so we can actually use this cool equation, and the molar mass of oxygen is 32 grams per mole, right? Yep. But we, of course, want to convert that to... Kilograms. Kilograms. So I can put grams on the bottom mm -hmm. and kilograms on the top. One kilogram is 1,000 grams, and that, I believe, is 0 0.032 Kilograms. Did I do that right? Yep. Permal. And so if I plug this into my equation, I can say V is equal to. And this is a great problem, except Mr. Bergman realized he is not giving you the full equation. Yeah, we actually just hit pause and had a little like, a little conversation, conversation here as we left out of the equation. Let's go back. This is very accurate, but we yep. forgot a step. So let me create a blank screen for a moment. We said that velocity is equal to the square root of 2ke over m. But we need to find out what ke is. Yes. We had that conversation a minute ago, Mr. Sams, about temperature and and how fast the molecules right. move. Well, there's a relationship where we can take the kinetic energy um, and relate it to temperature. Right. And it's equal to what? Three halves over RT. And the three, or halves. three halves times RT, sorry. So basically, we can plug this in right here for kinetic energy. Uh -huh. So I can say V is equal to the square root of three RT over two M. times oh, yeah. three halves RT over m, which is equal to the square root, we can have our twos cancel, yep. is 3rt over m. That's there you it. Go. Now, we should make a quick note about what r is here. Because this is an energy unit, mm -hmm. we're going to use um, the r value that's 8.3145 joules per mole Kelvin. Yeah. So jot this down. There's You've probably memorized from last year. Yeah, the 0 0.0821. 0 0.0821, which we'll use in this chapter. Mm -hmm. but so there's two values you need to kind of Yeah, anytime you see joules or energy, you need to use 8.3145. Perfect. Got to yes. use it. All right, so that's our equation. So yeah. 3RT over M. And so our equation, which I'm back to this stage, is equal to the square root of 3 three R T over M. Yep. Okay, now we know our M from here. Now so that's kilo that's kilograms per mole, Mr. Bergman. Yes, but the R has the mole unit in it. That's so we true. are good. That's okay. just gonna solve our problem. So we'll say three times eight point three one four five. That's joules 
per Kelvin mole, I'll put that in big brackets, times the temperature. Now, we need to pick a temperature, I guess. It feels about a balmy 21 Celsius in here. So if it's 21 say. degrees Celsius, you add Kelvin. 273, and you get 294. That's not a divide. It equals. So that's 294, and we're going to divide that by 0 0.032 kilograms per mole. Right. Now, if you kind of do the math, the moles cancel... And actually, I'm not going to get any square root of this, and I'm not going to get into details because joules has interesting. This will come out into so many meters per second. And so what is my value here? Uh, looking like 478. 478 meters per second. Now, is that fast? That's pretty fast. That's, um... Is that really fast? That's like a mile per second. That's, no, not a mile per let's second. That's like a that quarter out. mile per second. -ish. How fast? Let's put it in miles per hour for us okay. English people. If I was to do that, I would say there's 3,600 okay. seconds in one hour. Yep. My seconds would cancel. And I happen to know that there are 1,609 meters in one mile. How fast is that in miles per hour? That is 1,069 miles per hour. 069? Yeah. What? That's what it says. The oxygen molecule in this room is traveling at a thousand miles an hour? It looks like it. Why aren't you like getting ah, hit by the oxygen molecule that would hurt your body and crush your head? Well, we are getting hit by the oxygen molecules, but they're really, 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 really tiny. How are they so tiny? 32, it said here. That's kilograms per mole. Oh, of course, yeah, and a mole's a big number. Yeah, a mole's a huge, ginormous number. Yeah, so folks, this is kind of weird. The molecules in the room are traveling at a thousand miles an hour. We just, uh, this may be watched many years later, but we uh, just, uh, the Houston area, we're not in Houston, but they just uh, got hit by this huge hurricane. And this hurricane had uh, 150 mile per hour winds or something like that. Yeah. Basically, wind is air moving or molecules yeah, moving. Yeah, there's a whole bunch of them. But if you think about it for a moment, they're all moving in a constant random order. You see, and if 10% if if of them move in one direction, all in one direction, then you can get a 100 mile per hour wind because yep. they're moving on average about a thousand miles per hour. So it's good that they're moving in constant random motion. Yeah, they pretty much cancel each other out. They cancel each other out. But if you get a whole bunch of them all going the same direction, then that's how you get wind. And that knocks you over and rips your roof off your house and blows your double wide away. Yeah, indeed. Mm. Actually, I was in a race this weekend, and the guy who beat me, by two seconds, in fact, was from Houston. Ah! He came up because he couldn't be at his house. I almost wish that he didn't come because I was <laughs> not lost. It was a funny story. Okay, so it's, it is amazing that they travel at such an amazing speed. That's true of an oxygen molecule or whatever. They move at a very rapid pace. All right. Well, we're back. We had the pause. We had a disruption. I love okay. the pause button. Oh, I love the pause button, indeed. Yeah, somebody was asking about that today online. Okay, effusion. 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 All right. Is that like when like things fuse together? No. Oh, it's not nothing that. like it. No, effusion and diffusion, or diffusion, or diffusion, or something like that. They're they're sort of kind of related, um, but here's how this works. Effusion. If you had a sealed container and you punched a tiny, tiny little hole on the side. We can measure how long it takes for all the gas to escape out the tiny little hole. Okay, so that is the uh, that's what we call effusion. How uh, when gas passes through a tiny little hole. That sounds almost weird. Yeah, about gas passing through a tiny little hole. Yes, gas passing through a hole. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> that's okay. 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 So yes, but effusion is. Uh, how quickly a gas will pass out of a hole. Now, this is not a hole. This is a hole that, it, you know, in like a tire. Yeah. Like a bicycle tire. Tiny little hole. Yeah. Tiny little hole. Now, diffusion is when you have a gas that's released into a large area. And what it's going to do is it's going to go through whatever other gases are in the, are in the area. So y someone is sitting in the front of the room and squirts some perfume. Those perfume molecules are going to diffuse through the through the uh, through the gas molecules in the room. Now, again, remember they're moving at like a thousand miles an hour ish. Okay. Oh yeah, there's the perfume diffusing through the room. So why don't what, if I squirt perfume in the front of the room, why doesn't it hit the back of the room at a thousand miles an hour? Well, it's got all these other little gas molecules that it has to 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 bump through to randomly move through and bump into.